Love me some UNC basketball. For all you Duke fans, I'm sorry. Not sorry. Roy Williams, coach of UNC for years now, said something, and I'm sure it's been repeated and it's not original to him, so please don't come at me with that. Nothing great was ever accomplished without enthusiasm. i have back the mic away on this one. Nothing great was ever accomplished without enthusiasm. That's a true statement. I used trying to get some kids to win a basketball game, but let's apply this in real life for God. I'm Zach. This is The Average Christian, just a project about what it means to have a relationship with God and how to live that out in everyday practical terms. And this one is about enthusiasm. It's about a word that you probably only hear in Bible circles or in church circles called zeal. Zeal. Now, I've always had a problem with envy. Okay, bear with me for a second. I've always had a problem with envy. I've had a problem with wanting attention. I remember picking on this little girl that my mom used to keep and just giving her a hard time because I was jealous of the little girls, envious of the attention that mom was giving her. I was envious of other people because they had nicer things growing up, and I wanted to have uh, more popularity and more people respect me and went to great lengths to try to get that. Didn't really work out. So envy's been a problem. And what's funny is in the Greek one of the uh, the words that's translated for zeal or translated to zeal is also translated envy. Like in James chapter 4 and verse 2, you desire and do not have, you murder, you covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. How about James 3 and verse 14? If you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. Those words in there talking about envy also relate to us and translate to us the word zeal. Envy is strong. It's a strong. It can change the way that you live. It can change your whole life course. It can change your pattern of thought. But you can turn all of that around and have that same fervent spirit, that same fire. And by the way, that is behind the word zeal, this fire. We say words like passion. This zeal for God, if you just flip that over on its head and use it for positive and use it for good. It was zeal that moved Jesus, by the way, in John 2, 17, to cleanse the temple. He was uh, His disciples, after seeing him clear out this temple because it was being used as a place to make money and place for business instead of a place for God, his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. And you watch the passion with which Jesus made a whip there and drove out these money changes, as the Bible calls it, these people using God's temple to make a profit for themselves and this envy that burned within him. That same kind of fire and fervent spirit we have got to have. It, it, it cannot be this ho-hum. Some of it you've heard me talk about. I wonder you know, how we're going to tell everybody that singing is such a powerful tool in worship to God with the way we do it sometimes. I hear people talk about I'm, I'm big in a Bible camp and have been my whole life. And we go to that camp and the singing at that camp and that little rickety wooden chapel is so much better than when you come to a Sunday service, usually at a congregation, and you say, well, what's the difference? Is it the rickety chapel? Is it the lack of a carpet? It's because people, when they're there, are really putting their heart and soul into singing. And that's just one avenue that this comes out. You know what it's like to see and be around people who are passionate so one of the things about zeal is that it's a powerful motivator. That's one of the reasons why I need this, because it motivates me. It motivates other people. When you hear a speaker that's zealous, that's on fire, you are naturally drawn probably to what he's saying, or you're at least more open to listen to what he's saying. If I'm sitting here talking to you like this about how to love God and how wonderful it is to follow, them, how much of that are you going to listen to? You may not be listening to much of it at all right now, but you really are going to turn it off if I have no passion whatsoever for this. That uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 11 tells us not to be slothful in zeal. In Titus 2.14, you find out that Jesus purchased us. He redeemed us uh, to be his own possession of people zealous for good works, doing what's right, finding out what that is and going at it with everything we have. Secondly, zeal is also contagious. And you know this, you're around people, whether you're in business, uh, whatever aspect of life you're in, that zeal and that passion is contagious. I went to to Coach Williams for UNC. One of the reasons he's such a great coach is because of this passion, this fervent spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 2, the Corinthian brethren were so excited about being a part of the gift that was going to Judea 
Paul records this, for I know your readiness of which I boast about to you, uh, you to the people of Macedonia, saying that Achaia has been ready since last year and your zeal has stirred up most of them because it's contagious. Leaders are to be zealous. In Romans 12 and verse 8, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal. We need our leaders. We need people to step up and play that role and to decide to be passionate about this, that this makes a difference in eternity and life, that this is the main, most important aspect of life. It's got to be seen in our attitudes as well. Finally, zeal is the way to go after God. That zealous uh, aspect that we heard about uh, not being slothful in Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. Here's Romans 10, 1 and 2. I want to say this before I read this. Actually, I'll, I'll save it till after. Romans 10, 1 and 2. Brothers, my heart's desire, Paul's talking about the Jews of the day, and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. I know a lot of people who are passionate, who have wonderful intentions of following God, but don't do so according to knowledge. And so you can't just have this fire. You can't throw somebody out on a basketball court who has no idea what he's doing, but he's a great cheerleader and he's great at getting everybody pumped up and he can't shoot a layup or he can't dribble down the court. It doesn't do any good. So you've got to do it according to the plan and according to knowledge. But then when you have that knowledge, you have this confidence and you have this fervent spirit to go out and accomplish and to live for God. It's a matter also of repentance. You know, when you see in Revelation 3 and verse 19, when Jesus is telling the Laodiceans to repent, he says, I reprove and discipline those I love, so be zealous and repent. In 2 Corinthians 7, 11, when those people had repented, Paul had written a letter, that first letter that we read, that was a scathing rebuke in many ways. And here is their reaction, for see what earnestness this godly grief has produced in you, but also what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what punishment. At every point, you have proved yourselves innocent in the matter. How about 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 31? Earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you a more excellent way. That earnest desire there to follow God, to use what I've been given, to live my life for God has to be done with passion, with this zeal, with this fervent spirit, with this burning fire. And I hope that's the way you live. And I hope that you'll decide every day this is how you're going to go about it. I want to thank you for being with us again during this video. If you have not already and you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe by hitting this button. If you want to see what we released last time, it's in this corner. What YouTube recommends is over here. And if you're listening on podcasts, thank you as well. Please subscribe, rate, and review. And everybody, share this with somebody else.